Thank you for joining me today for a demonstration of Emerson's Delta V SAS SCADA. By the end of this presentation, you will have a clear understanding of how to begin to utilize our SAS SCADA correctly to quickly and easily support your organizational goals and targets. Delta V SAS SCADA is an IIoT cloud native platform designed to enable asset intensive industries to quickly and securely connect, acquire analytics, and provide control of remotely located devices anywhere anytime by any one of your authorized users. We help our customers become more productive, profitable, and sustainable to improve life around the globe. Our platform is permission-based, meaning you can assign varying levels of authorized end-user access from view only to full administrative control. We'll cover how to set up and manage complete authorized permissions in higher detail in another video. Today, we will focus on how to access your sites and view your data. To begin, you'll find the hierarchy on the left-hand side where you can locate your sites. This hierarchy is customizable with different folder structures, which can be organized by district, area, and field, or any configuration that best suits your organization's needs. By selecting a location in the hierarchy, you will access your site display. Users can select and deselect sites by clicking the checkboxes next to each location, or expand an entire folder by clicking the checkbox next to the folder's name. You can also use the smart search box to find specific locations. This search function allows you to search for a site by name, UWI, serial number, IP address, or user ID. For example, by typing in A1, it will display any location containing A1 in the site display. The hierarchy is consistent company-wide, so everyone will see the same folder structure based on their permissions. However, if users need a custom hierarchy, they can create their own run. The terminology may vary by region, but the functionality remains the same. To create a custom run, go to the bottom left of the screen. Next to the Hierarchy tab, select Run. Click New Run to start. Enter a new name for your run. I will use Test as an example, and then you are able to select the locations you would to include. You can add up to 200 locations, and you can use the Smart Search feature here as well to easily find the additions you would like to include. To prioritize locations, Simply click and drag them into your preferred order. Once you have arranged the locations, click Save. The test run that I have created will now appear with the specified locations and in the designated order. Users can create as many runs as needed. When logged in, select the specific run name to view those sites. You can delete or edit the run by clicking Edit Run. If you choose to delete, a confirmation pop-up will appear. Please note, runs are specific to each user login. Each user can create their own run and will not have access to others. Once your locations are selected and displayed, you can view various details in the site display. This includes the location name, UWI device type, its status, online, offline, or hibernating. The serial number of the site is displayed. Hovering over the eye icon will show the IP address. You can also see the last transmission date and time if the site is transmitting data. Next, you can view the sensors for each device. These sensors are fully customizable based on the tags and sensors configured at the site. Each sensor can be selected to display a 7-day trend in a graph format. By hovering over individual data points, you can see the exact date, time, and value. To adjust the date range for the trend data, up to 2 years, select the date range at the top of the screen. For example, set the start date to August 1st and the end date to August 20th, then click Refresh to update the data. The trend graph will now display the data for the selected period. To zoom in, click and drag on the graph. You may also print or download the graph by selecting the menu in the top right corner. To view and control your devices, from the site display, select the live data screen by clicking on the clock icon. This screen allows users to control the device of applicable and access additional data. You can input device values directly and view sensor data. Each sensor also offers seven day trend data when selected. There is also a demand pull button that retrieves the latest data from the device and updates our cloud-based system. Note that there is no extra charge for using the demand pull feature. Users can adjust gas compositions and orifice plate settings. These changes are immediately applied to the device on site. Devices will refresh automatically based on your polling frequency, but users can use the demand pull and refresh data as frequently as needed. Select the live data grid icon in the site display to view your data in a grid format. This view provides all the same features as the live data screen, including the demand pole and gas composition adjustments, but organized in a grid layout. In the live data grid, 
you can see sensor name, last transmitted value, sensor tag, sensor type, and timestamp of the last transmitted data. To view the seven day trend data for a specific sensor, click the graph icon next to the sensor name. Next, we have the summary tab located at the top left of the locations tab. This screen displays the current locations selected in the hierarchy. It provides an overview of production data and alarm notifications, allowing you to see all the relevant information on one screen rather than navigating through each individually on the site display. To the right of the locations tab is the map tab. This tab shows the locations on the map, along with the production values and alarm statuses for each site. By selecting a site on the map, you can access more detailed information about that location. Finally, we have our analytics tab located to the right of the map tab. This additional add-on feature enables you to present production data with vivid advanced analytics. Note that this is a customized feature and involves additional agreements and cost. For more details, please contact Delta vSAS SCADA support to see how you can gain access to advanced analytics. Now let's discuss alarming. Each sensor on the site display can be configured to trigger alarms. These alarms can send notifications via text message, email, or both. Notifications can be directed to individuals or groups, allowing for prompt viewing and acknowledgement of alarms. In the top right corner of the home screen is the alarms dashboard. Here you will find different colored bubbles and numbers that represent current alarms across the company. The color codes are as follows. Gray is a no communication alarm. Red is a high high or low low alarm. Orange is a high and low alarm. Black is a RTU alarm. And blue is missing flow parameter configuration. To access alarms, you have several options. First, the alarms dashboard. Click directly on the bubble in the alarms dashboard to view current alarms. This will automatically take you to the current alarms page where you can filter these alarms by location, type, or sensor name using the search function. Second, through individual locations, navigate to the options menu and select configure alarm. This will open the configure alarm tab, but you can also view current alarms for this location by selecting the Current Alarms tab. Finally, you can access alarms in the Admin tab by clicking Alarms in the pull-down menu. On the Current Alarm tab, you can view, acknowledge, or clear alarms. When you select Acknowledge, a pop-up window will appear where you can optionally add a note. While adding a note is not required, it helps track which user has acknowledged the alarm. Once an alarm has been acknowledged, it will be removed from the dashboard notifications. However, if the alarm condition persists beyond the set parameters during the next polling cycle, it will reappear on the site display. In the History tab, you can track the history of alarms. This page displays all historical alarms and allows you to filter the data using options at the top of the screen. You can also export this information into an Excel file. This page provides a detailed record of past alarms, including specific locations and timestamps. You can configure and edit alarms by selecting a location. The alarms for that location will be displayed below. The first alarm type is the no communication alarm. This alarm is triggered when a device has not transmitted into Delta V SAS SCADA server for a specified number of hours. The default is 24 hours of no communication between the device and Delta V SAS SCADA. To configure this alarm, select no communication and set the threshold for the number of hours without communication. You can also specify a do not trigger alarm period during which alarms will not trigger. For example, you might set this period from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. so that no communication alarms occurring during this time will be delayed and sent out at 6 a.m. instead. Select Contact and set who receives this alarm. Select Save. Next, select other sensors to configure their alarm settings. These are sensors that already set up for this site. If you need to configure an alarm for a sensor not listed on this page, please contact Delta V SAS SCADA for assistance. For this example, let's use the battery voltage alarm. On this page, you will see the seven-day trend graph that you can adjust by setting the desired date and time range. To configure the alarm, check or uncheck the boxes to enable and disable the alarm. Enter the values for triggering and clearing the alarm. The set value determines the threshold at which the alarm is triggered, while the reset value defines the threshold at which the alarm is cleared. The hysteresis set time feature delays both sending and clearing an alarm by a predetermined period. This helps prevent users from receiving frequent, individual alarms for temporary fluctuations. The system preforms an additional demand poll to confirm that the device remains in alarm state before it sends out a notification. This ensures that only sustained alarms will trigger notifications, reducing the likelihood of being overwhelmed.
by transient or minor issues. In the Message tab, users can view and customize the message that will be sent out. This message will be sent as a text message, email or both. On this screen, you will see the default message template that the system uses. Any text with a hashtag sign represent preloaded system information. You can customize the message up to 200 characters to suit your preferences. The Contacts tab allows you to manage who receives alarm notifications. You can select individual users, groups of users, or create a contact schedule. You can configure the maximum amount of retries by setting the number of times the alarm notification will be resent if not acknowledged. Set retry interval by defining the time between each retry. For example, if you set two retries with a 30-minute interval, the system will send out two notifications every 30 minutes if the alarm persists, ensuring that everyone is notified. Additionally, each tab includes an alarm test button in the bottom left corner of the screen. Click this button at any time to test the system and confirm that the correct individuals are receiving the alarm. The contact schedule feature allows you to set up a schedule for who to contact and when, making it ideal for shift workers to ensure that notifications reach the appropriate people. It also includes escalation points, so if alarm is not acknowledged, it can be escalated to the next person on the list. To return to the home screen, you can click the home button or the Emerson logo located in the top left corner. In the admin tab, you will find several important options. One of these is the company option where you can manage and verify company-related information with Delta V SAS SCADA. In the company section, you can verify and update information. Ensure that the company's address, contact information, and other details are accurate and up-to-date. In the security settings, admins can adjust security settings to maintain proper access control and system security. User logins monitor activity to see who is accessing the system and how frequently. In the admin tab, you'll also find the hierarchy option. This section allows administrators to adjust the hierarchy by moving locations into folders and adding new folders as needed. Property types in the admin tab are used to create mobile data entries for Delta V SAS SCADA mobile. Next, there is summary configuration. Here you can customize the summary tab by creating multiple categories to filter through the data that you want to view. For more information on setting up a summary tab, please refer to additional videos. The admin tab also includes units of measure. When you access this option, you will see all the unit types used for devices. You can use the smart search to filter through units or scroll through the list to find the measurement type you need. The units highlighted in blue are the default settings for new data entries. For example, if the default volume unit is set to MCF, selecting volume will display volume types current available. You can change this to barrels per day. BBL and all future volume entries will be displayed as BBL. Please note that changing the unit of measure will apply company wide. Finally, in the admin tab, there is the user option, which is accessible only to administrators. If you do not have the appropriate permissions, this option may not be visible. Here, administrators can create new users, manage passwords, and create user groups. User groups allow you to quickly assign permissions or add users to alarm notifications. There are two types of permissions. Web permissions control what the users can access and view, while permissions define the sites users can access and their level of interaction with those sites. Next, let's explore the options menu in the site display. Data entry allows you to input data in this site. This will take you to the live data screen. Event log displays changes or events that occurred on the device. Live data and live data grid provide access to real-time data and are the same as the icon on the site display. Location properties are used for creating data entries. Meter reports consolidate production data all on a single screen. QTRs, quantity transaction records, display totals or accumulated averages for a 24-hour period. You can view specific days, see the start and end time, and view when the QTR was created. If there were any errors or communication issues, you can correct the QTR by selecting Correct This QTR, modifying the necessary data and saving. The updated information will be shown with corrected details, including the date and time of the correction. Moving on to the data option, located at the top of the screen, Data Push allows you to schedule the delivery of your production data at specified times and in your preferred format, including integration with third-party software. To set this up, please contact Delta V SAS SCADA. We also have data exports as an option. These are pre-built exports that can be downloaded as Excel files. Select your locations to report in the hierarchy. You can filter by start and end dates, 
include all locations or narrow it down to only specific ones, and choose whether to include totals. After selecting your filters, simply choose the report to download it. Additionally, there are reports for various accounting software and auditing reports for administrators, such as alarm configurations, location summaries, user, and group summaries, and more. Now let's explore the Reports tab at the top of the home screen. You must have at least one location selected for the Report Center to be accessible. By selecting Report Center, you can create customized reports or use previously created versions. To view pre-created reports, select Show All. You can mark reports as favorites by clicking the star icon. For example, if you favorite the Well Summary report, it will appear in your favorites list for quick access later. Favorite reports will reflect the data for the locations currently open on the site display. Reports, whether created or selected, can be used across multiple locations and runs, depending on your open selections. To create a custom report, select Add. Custom reports can be saved either as user-specific or company-wide. Company-wide reports will be available to all users who can add them to their favorites. To customize a report, select Filters. Type of data will always be sensor data. Select the date range. Options include number of days, custom, specific start and end dates, month to date, from the start of the month to today, and last month, data from the previous month. Choose sensors. You can search or open folders to select the sensor. Use the green plus sign to add a sensor. You can adjust the color of the sensor data by selecting the color icon next to the sensor name. Adjust the data resolution to daily QTR, hourly QTR or raw data. Raw data shows every data point collected, while the QTR provides averages or totals for a 24-hour period. Adjust the units of measure if applicable, which will only affect this report and not the site display. Customize trend name will change the name of the sensor for the graph or report if needed. In the Graph tab, select Yes or No for the group by unit of measure. Click View Graph to preview it with the selected locations. You can deselect sensors by clicking on them, or reselect to add them back. Use click and drag to zoom in on your graph. In the Export tab, choose how you would like your Excel file to appear. Choose to include totals by clicking Yes or No. You can also choose the number of files, all locations on one report, one or separate files, many. Side-by-side -side format Yes or No. In the Save tab, choose the report scope, either user-specific or company-wide. Name the report, select Favorite Report if desired, and click Save. Once saved, you can utilize the report by selecting the locations you want to include and returning to Report Center. Click the Graph button to view the graph. Scroll up and down to see different locations or highlight multiple locations to display on one graph. You can also export the report to an Excel spreadsheet directly from here. On the site display, you can click Graph and Export for that specific location. At the top of the home page, the GradCap icon will take you to our e-learning website for additional in-depth and specialized courses and available workshops. In the Help tab, you will find additional resources such as documents with step-by-step -step directions, updates and more to assist with various topics. The support option enables you to create a support ticket for any problem you may face, or you can simply call our support number 24-7 and for help with password resets, report creation, troubleshooting, and more. We also offer customer remote visual assistance for screen sharing if needed and only with your authorization. Please note, we will only offer this type of assistance from your calling into our support line, and we will never call you and ask for you to turn on your remote visual assistance. The status tab will display any current issues Delta V may be experiencing, as well as our history of any recent outages. Thank you for your time today. Please contact our support team with any additional questions you may have, or set up training for you and your staff. Our customers are enabled with Delta V SaaS SCADA from every angle, with change in project management, complete training, and live 24-7 support, because we believe every person on Earth holds the potential to create a brighter tomorrow.